What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy, Theo Pence here with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy, AJ Richardson. Good morning, beautiful people. Hey, listen, I'm going to give a round of applause it is because morning. it's actually morning time. <laughs> <laughs> you say that shit. It is actually morning time, morning. so the shit makes sense. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Appreciate it's, you, bro. Uh, yeah, no problem. But uh, people, we have a very special guest here today. We done been through a lot of motherfucking battles over the years. We have Stan, the man, as y'all know, Stanley Johnson. Yes. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for having nah, me. We yes, appreciate sir. you coming sure. on, brother. For sure. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes sir. If y'all y'all probably can't tell, Stanley's a real <laughs> stocky motherfucker. <laughs> he was the same damn size in high school, so it was some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was crazy. That is crazy. But Stan, um, welcome to Run Your Race. What we do here, we pretty much like to talk about the race everybody has to get the, where they want to get to. And everybody has a different path that they go to, but it does not matter what path you take because you are just as capable of getting there. 100%. And everybody does not have the same path. And it just, it's just about the ter determination and your drive and stuff like that. So yeah. I think you're a perfect example of that. I think you're a perfect example of um, just you, you have a different path that you took and you had, you had the accolades, yeah. you, had, you had all the stuff, but at the same time, you had to earn everything you got. So we're gonna get into it. So Stan, let's go ahead and get right into it. High school. Well, not even high school. When, when did you first start playing basketball? Where are you from and all that? Yeah, I'm, I'm from, uh, I was born in Anaheim, California. Uh, my parents were from the South, so I did some time back um, in the South right after, then I moved back to California. So I would say California, born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, I started playing basketball when I was three, and you know my mom, so you know how crazy she was, but oh, my mom was a player herself. Um, so she put the ball in my hands when I was three. Not sure exactly why, obviously the love of it, but I think from that point in time, I think I was playing organized stuff by the time I was like, she put the ball in my hands when I was young, but by three, three and a half, I was playing like five, under fives, um, which was like R Y B C. Wow. Um, that was like a community league back in the day. So. By three, three and a half, I was already playing mm -hmm. um, real basketball. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, early. <laughs> that, that's hey, early. Listen, <laughs> that is early. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> your mom wasn't playing no games. She said basically, Stanley, you're playing basketball. You're playing right. basketball. This <laughs> right. is gonna be your sport. Focus on it. Yeah, right. And we both got kids now, so I got a daughter. She's she's three, so I'm really? sitting back like, dang, I was already. Cause she can play, she can do her thing, really? but like, yeah, but she, in the league, it'd be hard to do, you know, just attention span and stuff like that. So. Um, I guess as you get older, you start to yeah, realize for things. Sure. Yeah. I, as you see, I got my girl dad shirt on. I see, I'm with you. I put, yeah, I put, I put my uh, my daughter every night before bed. I tell her go get a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I say go get a bucket. She take the rock. She go dunk that motherfucker. That shit is hilarious. I got to say home the clip, so we play the clip. But nah, bro, that's dope. Um, so when you did you always play basketball? I think I played a lot of sports, um, mm -hmm. just like every kid, uh, especially from inner just city. Trying shit. Yeah, just whatever everybody else is doing. If it's stickball, if it's kickball, if it's football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, um, I did I did everything. Um, and I like to say I was pretty damn good at everything as well. At that stage, at that point, you know yeah. what I'm mean? saying. But um, I think around uh, Coach McKnight at Modern Day, uh, I was doing both and. He brought my mom in one day, just had a conversation with her, basically like, yo, if he wants to be really good at something, he has to pick one and run with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe in that now, but I'm glad I did because of my body and what and like my skill level, I needed to dedicate my time and my yeah. energy toward yeah. basketball. And you know, you know how that goes and For shit sure. like that. So um, he had a conversation. He kind of made me choose, kind of like the first time he kind of put the ball in my court. And I think at 13, 14, I kind of let football and everything else go. Mm -hmm. No track, no nothing. Yeah. Um, I singularly focused on basketball 24-7. Damn. What yeah. was like, so what age do you say you really figured out? What age was that when you were like, okay, basketball is going to be what I do or this is what I really want to focus on? And what made Man. you pick basketball? Right. Well, I like to say my, my, the first, my first memory 
because I, I feel like I, I, I can look at myself pre-K with a, with a ball in my hand. You know, I want to be an NBA player. I want to be an NBA player. My first memory is, is I was telling my, me, and my mom were, me and my mom were very goal-oriented. Um, so, you know, we're having a conversation as we do in the car all the time. And my mom, I'm telling my mom, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'll make sure you're good. I'll make sure I'm good. She said, okay. She, she, we go to the store. We go to Walmart. We pick up like a $2 basketball. And we go back in the car. And she buys this basketball for $2. And she, she explains to me that this $2 basketball can take you all around the world and get you any dream that you ever want to accomplish in your whole life. Yeah. And I think from that point in time and on, I feel like in my head, that's, this is what my only path out. Mm -hmm. um, but we went to Lithuania, um, or sorry, we went to, yeah, Lithuania um, on one of those U16, U17 teams. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt uncomfortable. I think Australia was pressing us. They had Dante and Ben Simmons. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they were pressing us. And it was like me and Tyus in the back. And I, I must have threw that bitch away like, Eight times. <laughs> like, I'm talking about seeing ghosts and all types yeah. of shit, right? So, like, I literally come home, right? And I just, I'll, I'll phone my trainer. I came right off the fucking plane. No, no, you know, my parents went with me. I was just, Tyson's mom was a chaperone. Come right off the plane, I call my trainer. I'm like, man, I never want to feel like that again. Yeah. I felt like uncomfortable. Like, it felt like the world was closing in on me. Yeah, really? And I literally, like, I just started, I was yelling at the moon, like, I will never be that bad again. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And, it gave me like a week off, and then going into that that next week, that's when my work ethic started changing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it started for me when yeah. I, when I started when my mind and my work ethic started changing. That's when I kind of started believing it for myself. Because um, even now, like you know, if I had to struggle getting up in the morning to do my job, I don't think I'd be able to do it anymore. For sure. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like too tough, too much, too much dedication, too much hard work, too much sacrificing. That's a fact. Um, I'm glad it's something that just comes from within me. Yeah. And, um, so I'm just kind of rolled with that at that point in time. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. I mean, we talk, we've done multiple podcasts on here and just talked to many guys, and it's always something that you didn't think about at the time, mm -hmm. but that changned you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that, that flipped the that flipped the switch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, like. I can't let that happen. Yeah. Like, it's crazy you say that. Me not making the Lithuania team, because I made the team before. Yeah. I made yeah. the team, and I was like top 10 in the nation. Yeah. Me not making that team yeah. flipped the switch to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that helped me become the player I am. You don't, know don't you wish that as athletes, we have that holistic approach all the time? Like, it's, you know what I'm saying? Use mm -hmm. like yeah. some of these, cause like as, as negative as that was, yeah. that was a, such a great positive. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So exactly. it's like, don't you wish like at all times we could have that hindsight 2020? It's, it's, it comes, it's like with everything. Though. Yeah, but I think, like, I think if that's I knew life. that. Yeah, yeah. that's just life in general. Like it goes to where we go to school and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we always say experience is the best teacher. True. You know True. what I mean? Yes. So yes. if you don't have those experiences, how are you supposed to mature mentally yeah. and understand all that. You know what I mean? So, yeah. They say that a wise man learns from others' mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Exactly. And I feel like, you know, with between the eye hoops and everything, I mean, I've known this motherfucker my whole life down there. Right. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> we've been through so many, and so many good mentors, and I feel like you've, you've, you've heard, these, heard these things be said to you, but when you're actually in the actions and actually have to do it, it's like a whole different situation. Um, and at 27 now, I'm like, in, you know, glad I'm 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 realizing those things, but yep. still, even you know, I'm not sure what the next thing's gonna be for me. But that when that you know that comes face to face, I don't know. I'm still yeah. gonna feel uncomfortable. It's still gonna be yep. weird. But yeah, so it's crazy. I mean, <laughs> <it's complete. laughs> we bet, damn near went through the same thing, bro. Like it's just I I don't even know what to say right now because yeah. I'm sitting there. I'm like that shit changed my life. Me not making it, you made you it, and it. you like that shit changed your life. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, it's it's those little things that. I get what you're saying, but people ask me, are you going to teach your daughter this? But like, my thing is, I'm going to do as much as I can to help her so she doesn't go through the same things, but she needs to go through those things yeah. to learn on her own. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're her parents. Mm -hmm. I'm her dad. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to want to listen to everything I say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's going to have, all right. Like now, you climbing on shit. You're not gonna learn until you fall on your ass. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, 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 that's, yeah. that's just how, that's just you can't how it say is. it enough, boy. You can say, you can say, but listen, you're going to hurt yourself. Yeah. All right. 
ain't ahead. gonna say shit. Yeah, go ahead. I ain't gonna say nothing. Then you fall. Yeah. Ah, I told you. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, suck it up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For so, real. so Stan, you get to uh, when did you start playing AAU? Um, you play AAU. Throughout. Yeah. Um, when I started playing AAU, I think Kenny Smith's team. I was like nine, eight mm. or nine. Yeah. Mm. Um, I went to start playing for his team. So I'll say eight or nine. Okay. So let's go ahead and get right into it. You yeah. got there and went to the Oakland Soldiers. Yeah, that was high school. That was high school. <laughs> that was high school, boy. When Dude, the, you know what's so crazy? It's, it's spinning on that last point is I only made it to the Soldiers because the team that I was on, yeah, Cal Supreme, yes. didn't allow me to play 17s. Why? Why? Who did they, who I don't want to like put like, you know, I don't, you know, I really don't like, you know, going back on like certain guys' names and certain people, but there was a player oh, okay. mm, that they had just preferred over me. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. That was close to my age. I was, mm. you know, I was, I was, I was young. Um, but yeah, they picked another player at the point in time that they thought would, you know, elevate the program that was trying to go up. And the only reason why I went, the craziest part, I probably practiced with the soldiers three times my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> All together, like me, I think I was about practice. to say that's that's. I think <laughs> yeah. that's just AU or normal. Nike EYB. Like you know, four years, three practices. Um, but yeah, that was out of a force. It was a total force, and mm. there's no other Nike team. And I don't know why I was so committed to Nike at the time, but <laughs> that's what we were doing. Hey, listen, right? We I'm all sure wanted, we all wanted <laughs> Nike. <laughs> like that. That. Listen, we were getting all the other shipments from other <laughs> yeah. other brands. We like. <laughs> When the Nike shipping right. Right, <laughs> right, 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 We gotta go play on the circuit. Hey, listen, bro, me and Stan went to so many camps. Me and, Ken, me and Stan were the clowns of the of the class. For sure. We, we For were sure. out there laughing, sure. having a good time. For sure. But in between those lines, yes, it was the smoke. most competitive. It was smoke every single time. Mm. My, th I think, I'm just reminiscing on all the battles we had. I'm like, even at camps, mm. like we had to. Uh, Kevin Durant camp, we had the Brian camp, we had the Let me say, let me say this, bro. Like, isn't it crazy looking back on that shit? Like what kids are going through now? <sighs> when I tell you, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know now now I feel old because I really don't know some of these kids. I don't know. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I I don't even, I've never seen the kids play. Usually I was like, I'm a little yeah, better yeah. than that. But when I tell you, like, our draft class of wings, or our our year of wings. Yeah. Me, you, Kelly, Justice. Like, yeah. when I tell you we are like, our parents are friends. We yeah. are friends, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are ripping each other's head off. Head off. Like, in these camps, trying to get a spot, trying to do what we have to do, whether it was in college or before college. One wanted to be over the, yes. because I'm we kept flip-flopping. Yes, yeah. the whole, whole life. <laughs> like, from eighth grade all the way up, right? Even till now, right? Yes. <laughs> so it's like, like, I don't understand. And that's how we loved each other, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, end yeah. of the day, um, I think when we're done and retired, I think, you know, why we, probably, why we will all have a relationship where you can hit me up and I'll pull up on him yeah, anytime. Yeah. It's because of those honest, those battles and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And we can honestly went through them. I think some, some, some of these, some of these camps in nowadays, I feel like, you know, the five on fives. And I'm like, damn, we had like all wings, one on ones. It was mm -hmm. like, it was yeah. like way crazier. It was crazy because our class, we had like elite ass point guards, mm. elite wings, and yeah. our bigs low key ran like we're at the top at yeah. the end. Yeah. Like the bigs we had was crazy. Yeah. You had Jaleel, Miles, uh, yeah. Cliff. People forget about Cl yeah. Cliff. Cliff was Cliff a Alexander. Cliff was a savage. Yeah. yeah. So it, it was, it was nuts, bro. I think social media plays a part into it this generation yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know I, I mean? love it though. I love it. They're making money now too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they celebrities mm -hmm. pretty much. Mm. Like, could you imagine? Which, which, which? I, you know what? I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the other side of that one. Mm -hmm. Actually, where I'm like, you know, I'm like, you went to a small college town as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want this social. I don't. I'm good off oh, yeah, social yeah, media. Thanks. I don't. I'm glad I didn't have nil. I'm glad I wasn't doing that stuff because my college experience was my college experience and. That shit's gone. And no one knows about it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that Ain't shit is gone. Knows like, you're not about like, it. living through me. <laughs> We're not doing none of that. That yeah. shit is gone. No one can say nothing about it. These yeah. days, like, you catch kids getting in trouble for the weirdest shit in the world. And I, all, all I think about is like, man, what if I actually had a million dollars <laughs> on my head and motherfuckers with me 
at, you know, frat parties or shit like that. And yeah. I'm like, bro, I couldn't do it. You're having to be a pro before you even a pro. And th that, that's the thing. It's not about playing basketball no more. Mm -hmm. It's a business. It's a business. Thank you. It's a business so, from high school have, yes. from now. And now they're having a seven, which I'm saying that that's what they got to do. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's a lot of responsibility, especially without a class or a course. Like, yo, sit him down, have someone follow him around. Like I had a guy, David Miller, he would be right next to me all the time. He would game me up on what to do, what not to do. Mm -hmm. But now these kids are, are just kind of out in the streets yeah. where, they, you know, if they're at USC, God bless you, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, God <laughs> bless sure. you. You can't do shit. Yeah. But, that's a fact. you know, some of these kids, I'm like, man, this, but that's, that's also what's next for you. I mean, when you get in the league, it's the same thing. So yeah. kudos to them. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they definitely are getting a little head start on what it is to be a pro. Yeah. They're getting paid like pros and they, the, the scrutiny they can go, like, it takes one second. One video. Yeah. One video. But one video. What's the difference, though? I think the biggest difference, from a pro and an amateur is at, in the pro level, they don't tell you when you're wrong. Yeah. That's like the, one of the biggest difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where in college, coach will keep, hey, go to class. Yeah. Go to class. Yeah. Hey, make it on time to waste. Right. Hey, so, They're going to be like, you yeah. a grown man. What do I need to leave? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah. yeah. 20, you know what I'm saying? 5,000. <laughs> Another 5,000. Okay, suspension. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're getting it right out of you. Like, it's ridiculous. They're not playing no games, yeah. boy. I, I think that's a part of like adulthood too, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's shit. Like, you at some point, you got to grow up. You got to be mature. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, you get this, you're making all this money. Where the discipline gonna come in? At? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I get it too. Mm. That's tough. That's tough. Talk about your Oakland Soldiers team, and then oh, we're gonna shit. get to your high school team. Man, there's so many, so many guys that were so good. I mean, oh, we let's go back from the start though. So Theo was playing on CP3. Yep. He was playing, right? Uh -huh. Theo was about to jump out the fucking gym, <laughs> right? So I couldn't fucking jump. So I was, you know, coming off the bench, whatever. Uh, I remember you and LJ used to go at it. Yeah. You know I mean, you used to be good. Mm -hmm. um, but it started off like I didn't even play at all. It was like Brandon Ashley, Dominic Artis, um, Jabari Bird, um, the, uh, Tyree and Tyro, which who played in, the, played in the NFL. I'm missing some. Yeah. Then it went to AG by, you know, really AG's team with Jabari, um, myself, um, Trevor. Stack. Um, we, actually God, had, we actually had uh, Gabe Vincent as well. On that team that won the Peach Jam. Really? really? Crazy, right? Aaron Gordon, oh. Jabari Parker, Gabe Vincent. Yeah, myself, uh, Ivan Rab. Yeah. Um, they had, uh, what's the artist? Dominic Artist. Dominic he was a little Artis. older. Yeah. But yeah, we just like, you know, I think the year that we won it, which is probably the best year we had there, it was the first time that California had all the best players on one team. Mm -hmm. No offense to Parker or those guys that played on Cal Supreme that year, because they ended up beating us in Vegas that year, mm. whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, <I want> peach. <laughs> um, that's the big one but it was the first time that we got all our guys together and we just like I'll give this to Aaron and 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 it, even though I, I take this in my life now playing with Aaron that summer he got hurt that summer but playing with him that summer because he got hurt after the first session he couldn't play any session we got our ass kicked he came back and he I remember texting him he came back um, for peach jam that mother played so hard <laughs> like he played so hard mm -hmm. it was like contagious and inspiring yeah mm -hmm. and he always like, said it. you know what i'm saying like i remember he, he i think it was a foot fracture he had right mm -hmm. his foot fracture you have come out i hit the first shot boom we're, we're going crazy aaron gets a steal first joint tries the 360 windmill it. and i'm not talking about like a regular baby one he tries to fucking space jam this shit mm -hmm. hits off the back rim goes into the second 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 little row up there um at Peach Jam. And the whole, and that kind of set the tone. It's almost like a miss, it was a missed dunk, but it kind of set the tone. Oh, we on the time we on. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's what type of time we on this whole shit. And yeah. the whole tournament, <laughs> and I think, you know, cause he had missed the whole spring and pretty much the whole summer. Yeah. He wanted Julius's head. He wanted Wiggins head. Mm -hmm. I mean, he wanted their head. Yeah. yeah. So we played Wiggins in the final and I've just never seen a dude play that hard. Yeah. And I remember talking to him after, He's like, man, I just can't get out competed. Yeah. So from after that, I was like, bro, I can't. Did we play on the final four? We played. I was no, that was the following year. Was oh, the oh, I think we did. I think we did. I think we was it the four or the final? It was a I think it was a four. Cause we played we played CIA bounce in the final. Oh, okay. Did Jabari Jabari hit a bunch of game winners that year? So no, 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 no. I missed one. You might have missed it. Sick about it. 
You missed a game winner? I had a, I had the motherfuckers beat. He missed one. He Came missed, off right wing. Yeah, he missed one. Break it. He missed one uh, our senior year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our senior year. We went to overtime. Senior. We had mm. a crazy game at Pitchdown overtime. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And was you know the atmosphere at Peach, like the gyms yeah. be so small, yeah. so it'd be packed. Yeah. Ooh. And you remember that was the one time we didn't have ESPN. It was one time Peach Jam didn't do crazy. ESPN. Yeah, that I was, was crazy. Pissed. The game was crazy. crazy. Damn. Stan, I mean, you play with some motherfuckers on Oakland Soldiers. I mean, you just named them all off. We, yeah. we you played the clips. I mean, they was monsters. But modern day, you were the guy. It was a special time for sure. Like, how did you like? You literally had Cali on lock. It was a lot of. It was a. It was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of stuff. It was a lot of stuff going on. I, I feel like sometimes you know, the narrative and I think modern days like you know is is a common enemy in California in a way. Mm -hmm. um, me and my trainer were just talking about the other day. They've made rules almost like simultaneously at at points to to to, I guess, detour modern day's dominance. Um, I will say I was like, you know, I feel as though um, I was the best in my area. Yeah. Like in my four years, you know, there wasn't really guys from the state that I thought were better than me. Yeah. Um, but my freshman year, I played center. Yeah. You know, like I played with, I couldn't really do much dribble and all those things. So to, 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 to to say you know all this great shit about everything, I, I I think it's more of a team thing. Now give me a good you know a good senior year, a good junior year for sure. I did some hard work, but my first two especially, you know, Cade Reinhardt, Xavier Johnson, mm -hmm. Eli Stalzer, David Brown, Jordan Strawberry, Elijah Brown, mm -hmm. like all these guys that were all college players. I mean, by the way, we don't, what people don't speak about, we had 10, 11 guys going D one every year as well. Every year. So it's like, it's not really strength in numbers where there's yeah. strength yeah. in just a, a good player. I think at modern day, I would be a person that, you know, the physical like size and, and the want to and the talent meets the structure mm -hmm. at the perfect time where I did all four years as well, that I learned enough to get myself to these next For steps. Sure. And by the time my senior year, it was kind of personal mm -hmm. with some of this stuff, especially because yeah. like I felt like in California, like we go play and stuff, and you know, we're you know, we spar. Yeah. But I have my sparring went over here with somebody else. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's <laughs> like sure. I didn't really get that respect for for the longest. And I mean, even now, I mean, whatever, people are gonna feel a way about it. Um, so I took it personal playing high school in general. I take it personal now, but especially going at that point in time. So um it was a great run. I mean, crazy enough, like I think my senior year, like there was two games, Jordan McLaughlin and the guys I work with at Veritas now, George, we won two overtime games. We should have lost. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jordan Could've McLaughlin like should have lost mm -hmm. for sure. Um, How many state championships we got? I got four. All Damn. four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Went four for four. Four for four. I got two. I can't even say shit. <laughs> I got two. I mean, my man went four for four. Yeah. Would you say this? I would, I would, and I, and I admit this, this is the first time I admitted this. Mm. I would watch Stanley's highlights and be like, I got to one up him. For sure, I did that. For sure. I'm, For sure. I'm watching, I'm like, I'll be like, oh, Stanley sure. got a baller's life clip. Oh, I need one For of those sure. too. I'm going off. Sure, <laughs> especially, you know, especially around holiday season, the tournaments get going. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So they got the big tournament in North Carolina. We mm -hmm. start playing in Vegas. Yeah. Right? And the cameras is on and da 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 da. So it almost be, by the time we were seniors, they get the motherfuckers out. <laughs> they, get them, they get them they out. Really quick. He might, and he play off, you know, I didn't know Eastern, Eastern, whatever. I wasn't really keen on it, but if his game's at seven, it's only four o'clock yeah, yeah. in Vegas. Yeah. yeah. So I'm seeing what's going on. He get 40, da 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 da. By, night, by the morning, he knows exactly what I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? And it's moving around. It's moving yeah. around the whole country. So right. that type of shit, though, like, I don't think I would be here today. We would have been here today without it. You got yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Without it. Because if you don't got nobody pushing you, and like, that's the thing that, I, I I never take for granted is like, yes, you guys want to be the guy on their team. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have those guys that are pushing you and that are just as good as you on yeah. your team, how, what are you comparing to? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. if I'm going to play in, on my team, I got AJ and Hong. Yeah. What the hell? Are, <laughs> you winning with me. <laughs> hey, I'm in the corner. Spotting up. Spotting up. 
<laughs> yeah, that's but funny. like we we pushed each other and that just prevailed us to where we are. But mm -hmm. Stan, when you started getting recruited, what made you uh what 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 made you pick Arizona? What was it what was different about Arizona than everybody else? It felt like family. Mm -hmm. And 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 you know like you know how the recruiting process was. You were kind of Carolina the whole time, but kind of like very similar, I feel like. Yeah. Um but let me just speak on it like this. Like, I think the whole process is, is bullshit and it's a lot of bad people that lie Yeah. Um, in general. So mm -hmm. with my parents and shit like that, it was super easy to get the, the ones out the way. And it's just nasty how it went. It, with, with Sean, like, you know, um, he was honest the whole time and I, and I almost felt like I kind of almost went to another school at some point in time. Um, but it shows you how honesty prevails. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We had a good relationship and it was more like when I had mentioned that, oh, I'm going this way, we just had a conversation mm -hmm. and it kind of flipped it um, yeah. for me. Um, and the other school, when I mentioned the same thing, it was hell freeze over. Mm -hmm. um, I should mention that person, but he still has a job today, so I don't want to ruin his yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, I, I really respect Sean to this day, Joe um, as well, the guys who recruited me and, and it was a family and everything they promised me, they they, they were true on it mm -hmm. from day one um, all the way up until now. They st I still call them. They're still my re a resource that I use in basketball. Um, so it was easy. For sure. I mean, I remember I committed, I called every coach that was pretty much on, I think I called them, all of them. One of them hung up on me. Yeah, I, I mean, if I say if I said some stuff that happened, I know I would get some people fired for sure, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. But um, it, it it was crazy, bro. Like it, it was, I get it. It was a lot of time that you put into recruiting. Yeah. But like at the same time, it's just like we had to pick one. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not but like no, we can it, go to it, every. To me school. though, it's like it's like that. Like, Be like yourself. it's it's my son. You're mm -hmm. like you, you know my, my dad. He ended up getting you know buck with these guys. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. for real, like. You're talking to a, a 17 year old. Mm -hmm. No matter how this shit go, like you're a grown man talking to a kid. Exactly. You're supposed to be an advisor. For sure. You're recruiting his friends. You know what I'm saying? For like sure. how you how you want this one to work out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't I don't respect that because I feel like, you know, all the schools that I'm not talking about all whatever of them. I'm talking about five. Yeah. Every official visit that we had at my house, it was both both my parents' houses, it was full course meals. Had attention on time. It was respect the whole way. Mm -hmm. So I, I just expect that same respect back when you decide to make a decision. It wasn't like we finessed you. Mm -hmm. The only person that I can say I did wrong to is Billy Donovan, which I apologize because mm -hmm. I never went to Florida and yes. actually saw the campus. Mm -hmm. And that was disrespectful, but I was already done. So I didn't want to disrespect him, take the flight to Florida, yeah. knowing I was already kind of picking with these, exactly. these two, right? Yeah, exactly. So that was it. But... I mean, that's at the end of the day, you, you, it wasn't like you just did it because like, fuck yeah, it. right. But yeah, it was yeah. just like that, you had your mind made up. Yeah. Like once I knew I was gonna, I wasn't wasting nobody else time. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, Stan, you get to uh, Tucson. That's how, that's how you say it. Yeah, whatever. Okay, not, not a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> you get Tucson, to Tucson. Yeah. What was your welcome to college moment, my boy? Wow, like. Like basketball? Yeah. Um, no, we don't talk about the off the court. Okay. Everybody know off the court. Um, <laughs> it's a lot yeah, of freedom. It's, it's, it's a it's, lot of freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, I think the I think the one I was telling the story the other day. Um, we were on campus all all summer doing what we're doing what we're doing, you know, working out, getting ready for season. And a lot of fanfare and stuff like that. And then we getting ready to go play Red and Blue, which is our yeah, midnight yeah, yeah. scrimmage yeah. or daytime scrimmage for us. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're doing it's a regular, regular regular day, just like practice, right? You know, whatever. So play well in the red and blue. Um, trying to dodge media after we end up doing it as uh, me and TJ end up doing it. And my dorm or my dorm is out the front instead of going out the out the loading dock way mm -hmm. to the arena. So I walk out front and I see a bunch of people. It's like a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, let me sign a few. And I'm I'm walking. And by the time I take 10 steps, I see people running from this from the back of the building, sprinting. It's probably like a couple hundred people. And I used to have a picture up on my Instagram. And I look up and I'm literally sitting there now for like an hour and a half. 
just signing autographs for people. Yeah. yeah. And it was like the craziest thing because in my life, I've never Had seen that before. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and they're all wearing Arizona shit. They know yeah. exactly like who I am, my name and all that stuff. And I, you know, I've seen that before at arenas or different places, but- yeah. You're a rock star. That, that, that was the first yeah. time where yeah. I was like, whoa, this is like, you know, a different thing. Yeah. This is like a culture here. Mm -hmm. um, and there was, and it was like, they, I waited there, they waited there. It was, it was a crazy moment. That was like the welcome, like, ooh, damn, you're really not in high school anymore. Um, off the court, well, basketball off the court at least. What was the, uh, you had 6 a.m. workouts? Yeah, yeah, we had, we had stance class, which is even crazier. What the hell is that? Yeah, so, <laughs> it, it's no basketball involved. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the whole defensive segment that you would do like in a college, yeah. and you know how the college defensive segment is that whole hour. Yeah. So we had that with the volleyball um, before classes at like, I think it was like 5.45 was the start, 5.30. 5.30 to 6.30. And if you were late, it was an hour on the Stairmaster. Damn. Before practice. Yeah. So you have to, don't, I mean, here, here's the thing. Start at 5.30. You get there at 540, you gotta do the whole 50 minutes, then come back an hour before practice, get on the Stairmaster, practice and lift. Yes, yeah, don't be late. Yeah, don't be so late. Should, you know, I think, you know, me and Rondé were probably the king if I had <laughs> four or five apiece on this season. I did not, I do not, I do not forget any of those fucking times. It got to the point where I was comfortable doing the Stairmaster at some point in time. Just like, oh, I'm sad, sad you to know, admit. I'm gonna bite the bullet. I'm doing the stairmaster. <laughs> stair <laughs> rounds is not like round. And here's the thing that would get you right. Where our locker room is is separate from our, our practice facility. Mm -hmm. So say if you're if you're, you know, you're at you're at five twenty five, you ain't making it to the court. Oh yep. uh, yeah. <laughs> you ain't getting from your facility <laughs> through the door downstairs, feet on the floor, shoes tied. You ain't making it. You yeah. have to be intentional with your time. So I definitely caught myself early in the year, like, you know, June to, I think right before Maui, I started cleaning that shit up. I didn't, you know, I ain't got, yeah. I ain't got time to be got time on the Stairmaster. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so worried about time for conference, I ain't got time to be yeah. on the Stairmaster. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. What was the game that uh, Stanley was just like, yeah, it's to, uh, I'm, him. I'm, I'm him. I don't, I don't think I, um, the fuck out of here, Stanley. <laughs> I know you. I don't think I. Oh, oh. I don't think yeah, I. Yeah, exactly. I oh, think, oh. No, no, no. I'll say this, though. So we had so many players that, like, it was more of, like, moments. Yeah. Like, because, like, the games, like, they would get out of hand quick. Yeah. Um, especially with our size. But I remember San Diego State, they were talking big shit, mm -hmm. like, in Maui. And I just remember, <laughs> I just remember feeling like, damn. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna will I'm gonna get this game somehow some way like yeah. you know whatever you want to do how are you want this how are you want this to go we 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 gonna get it done, um, and that was a game I felt like I started feeling real comfortable especially because I had a terrible like not a terrible but I was I was kind of struggling getting used to practicing and all this shit like you know tagging the roller and shit like that yeah, I was, yeah. everything wasn't clicking all the games were fine transition was fine yeah, yeah, yeah. some of the half court shit was fine defensively on the ball I was fine but yeah. like that game I felt myself like being able to tag to get and it. stay yeah, the yeah. nail and like doing shit that I would yeah. do in high school um was the first game that was the first game you start click how many you have I think I had like 17 17 and 7 Played a clip Play the clip. <laughs> it was you know. like 17 to seven, but it was, it was, it was like, you know, I had been watching Winston Shepard and Dwayne Poley's like a big brother to me. Yeah. Um, and I felt like they thought it was sweet for sure. They were like, oh, we got these young motherfuckers for sure. We're going to get them out of here. Mm -hmm. And he's supposed, he's supposed to be what lottery? Oh yeah. Let me get some of that for too. Sure. <laughs> um, and I wasn't, you I wasn't going. going for that. Nah, going for that? I wasn't really going for that. <laughs> <laughs> like I wasn't, you know, especially we in Maui. And I'm like, damn, yeah. this lights is bright for sure. Um, and it was a real physical game. Mm -hmm. It was a real, like, it was real, like a, it was a gut, like it was like a gut punch. It was the bit, the highest level game I ever played in at the point in time was there. I had never been on that type. I ain't never felt that type of pressure. I ain't never. I had, I had never at a point in time played that physical of a game really? against grown men, like where it's like that. Yeah. Um, at that point in time, in my opinion. 
and I didn't shy away from it, which I didn't. I didn't expect myself to, but <laughs> yeah, but you can <laughs> <a fucking> tank. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, have you, you played against Western Shepherd before? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. like you know, how he, he's yeah, he, crazy. Yeah, he like, talks. You know, he's talking shit. Yeah. He's grabbing and holding. So I'm still 17 now. He's like 25, for sure. For sure. <laughs> like 23. So I, you know, I was like, all right, motherfucker, you know, X, yeah, Y, Z, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, and then you, it kind of got the ball rolling from there. But y'all end up getting to Elite Eight. Yeah, got to Elite Eight. Lost to Frank because we was about to fucking play y'all. Yeah, we'd have, we'd have got in that ass. Oh but, no, bro. Yeah, we were. F I don't know what to say, bro. I got poked in the eye, <laughs> right? So I got poked in the eye. I missed the second quarter. It's always funny because what Duke won that year. Yeah, Kentucky was really good. You guys yeah. were really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's when they had D book coming off the bench. That's when they had the platoon atrocity. Yeah. Like how? how oh my god! They even, they was uh, how they even lose? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was cold. And I like to say we were we were damn good, at, but at the end of the day. Who who comes? Who's playing? What what happens at seven o'clock? And at the end of the day, we didn't play well enough. I didn't I didn't feel like we dropped one at ASU. That mm. thing was so stupid, and partly because of your bet. I, I think I was one of our best players, and I I, sh I just didn't turn the corner until later in the season with mm -hmm. like small shit. Yeah, that really affects the team in a long yeah. way. So I'm not saying that we didn't deserve the win. Not saying that we weren't talented enough. I'm just saying I don't think we didn't get a fair shake. Mm -hmm. Right. I, yeah, I got poked in the eye, but could have been anybody. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, only thing I'm sick about, right, is Sam Decker's my matchup. And I ain't playing fucking great, but I ain't letting him play great either. Yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> I leave the game and he just goes fucking He ham. went nuts. Yeah, he just goes ham. And that's the only thing I kind of like wish back. I'm like, can I just keep the same matchup? Yeah. yeah. You know, but, can I do my job yeah. defensively and maybe. Somebody else picked me up. And right. We were good though. Yeah. Not, not saying we were in a great spot, but we were yeah. like we were down like a hundred. We yeah, were down yeah. like four or tight, yeah, somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, definitely, especially with our, with our athleticism. Definitely, that's the type of game that we crack through mm -hmm. because they don't have enough athletes. Like we eventually start cracking those gaps and shit like that. Yeah. But as I said, but I, I thought Frank was the best player in the country that year. Oh. Maybe Ja. I think Ja was actually, yeah, yeah, but Frank yeah. was damn, yeah, damn sure up there, damn and he so did his good. thing. Frank was yeah. cold. Frank had a crazy moment. I'll give Frank this one. He, uh, Caleb dunks the ball like around him, and Caleb Tarzuski yells at, "Yeah, motherfucker!" Something like something like that. And Frank looks at him, and is like, and nods his head. Immediately after that, he fouls everybody out. <laughs> Caleb has three fouls. Brandon has three fouls. Rhonda has two and two three fouls. I have two fouls. Like, I've never seen a person just like, you know, that was and, and especially for, I mean, no offense to, you know, not to be racial here, but for a white boy like that, I've never seen that before. Yeah. yeah. No. Like, I've seen a lot of, you know, Grayson I was in our class. He was pretty fucking good. Yeah. But Frank was like, let's, I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Type shit. I really ain't never really seen that before. He was a dog. So man. yeah. I was I was a little different for I mean, him. Caleb Tarzuski was one big motherfucker. Big bro. motherfucker. He was huge. Big motherfucker. Oh Caleb was God. blowing the shit out of his ass too. Bro, <laughs> bro <laughs> Caleb like, Tarzuski is yeah. huge, bro. Yeah. Oh my God. Shout out to Prize Picks, our official presenting partner of Ray Race. Prize Picks is the daily fantasy sports game that everyone is playing. It is super easy to set up, and my boy AJ is gonna show you how easy it is. This is how easy it is. Head over to Prize Picks and download the app. I can make my picks and submit my entries in less than 60 seconds. You pick between two to six players, and this is a skill-based fantasy game. You only play against the prize picks projections. It's simple. You pick either more or less. And AJ didn't even mention, you can make 25 times the money using prize picks. And also, on days like Taco Tuesday and Flex Friday, you can get discounts also. Prize picks will match your first deposit up to $100. That means if you spend twenty dollars, they have matched twenty dollars. If you spend a hundred dollars, they have matched a hundred dollars. And y'all already know who I'm rocking with. I'm rocking with my boy with Lamar Jackson and OBJ, and I'm picking more for everything. And guess what, everybody? They don't just have NFL. They got MLB. They got college football and many other sports. Go to PrizePicks.com/race and use code Race for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. But Stan, y'all losing Elite Eight. Yeah. You're going back to campus. You knew you were out of there. Sayonara. 
Nah, we. No, nah, I mean, stands. No, uh, okay, stop give, the cat. No, 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 stop no. the cat. You guys, you guys, you guys. Anybody I went to school with, I literally was there. I didn't do any of the pre-drop shit. I literally was there all the way through. I had a couple conversations that didn't go the right way. That's why I ended up leaving. I got you. But you know, at that point in time, I ain't. <laughs> for a minute, it sounds funny, but you love college. No, I didn't, I didn't love it that much. <laughs> I didn't love it that much. Actually, one of the conversations I had was, I'm only coming back for three games. Pac-12 championship, Final Four, and, and national championship. Uh-huh. And Sean was like, well, the season's 38. So unless you want to be here for the other 35, you might as well just go somewhere else, which is the honest, true thing. Like, your heart and your mind have to be into it. You can't be Why one step Why the hell out. did you go and think you were just going to play three games? No, I'm saying I'm here for three games, meaning like... Them the three games that you want oh, to play in. I just yeah. want to be a part of that. Yes. I want to I mean, be a part like, of those three you, games. Whether, you. Whether, 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 you know, we put, I'm going to play all the games now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, for me, it's like, bro, fuck the ball. You guys want to score? Score. You guys want to have a good game? Have good games. Like, and no matter what people say, no matter if you're going to that process, you got multi-million dollars on the line, and, and you can go get it. You're, you're going to be fucking hyper-aggressive. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, I was letting them know, like, my teammates and everybody, like, man, like, bro... I don't really give a f- about averaging 20. That's what we come back for, right? To get more shine, mm-hmm. you know, Sports Illustrate, all these things that were definitely offered to me at the point in time. And I was like, bro, I'll take you to the shit. You guys can have it. Like, I want y'all to know that I'm not here for a magazine cover or, you know, more What's whatever. What's wrong with that, though? I, I, I felt like it's wrong. Because at the same time, it's like, these are also my brothers. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, like, I want to see these guys go league. And at the end of the day, if I'm here... I'm being honest as possible. The ball ain't going around that much. <laughs> <laughs> Not for real. Right? Like, so, for real like, you know what real. I'm saying? So to give another motherfucker opportunity is only fair. And, and just like the Oakland Soldiers or just like every organization I've ever been in. Next man up. You know, yeah. you motherfuckers got to leave now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I didn't want it to come off as like, which is Soldiers, soldiers whatever. But I, I didn't want that. it to come off like, hey, he's coming back just to try to go from eight to, to three. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying. I when I'm that. already like God's already blessed me enough. You yeah, know what I'm saying. Sure. So that that was more my point than anything. Um, and then obviously my mother and her situation and stuff like that. It it I did, had no chance from the. St- I had a chance at at first, but as I start digging, as you're supposed to do, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, evaluate sure. your situation. Then obviously I had to get out of there for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, you didn't do no pre-draft, so you answered that question. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't do. <laughs> I did like a month. I I, I did it with Kells. Um, in San, in San Santa Barbara, I did like a month, but I was still I was still doing the uh the spring shit with with Arizona. Yeah, yeah. So I was still I was still doing stuff. I was still moving around. Um, mm. practice, you know, working out, lifting, doing all that. Yeah, yeah. But just getting ready for the league, I was already. I, you know, I felt like I was getting ready. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So you anyway, were still working out. Yeah, I was still working out a gotcha. ton. You know, doing gotcha. the same shit I was yeah. doing. Same same development. So, draft night. Talk about it. Talk about that experience. Um. I didn't have the suit I expected to have. Um, yes, it was actually like a movie. Um, <laughs> it was actually like a movie. So I ordered the suit. Um, I was actually working with two different companies. Not really, but one company. The guy, um, something had happened, um, and he didn't have the suit prepared. Um, I actually didn't even show um, at all. He just sent the suit up. Oh, it's not done. You know, whatever. Other suit I got, I got fitted. I, I didn't end up going with that company. It was a free suit. Way too small, right? Like <laughs> small on the legs. Yeah. So this is like, what, 11 o'clock in the morning? So I kind of like call my agent. It's like, is this going to change my draft stock? Is this going to act, you know, <laughs> is this going to be something that is like seen as like me being prideful, not going to the draft on draft night being in New York? He's like, yeah. oh, no, you know, people understand. So I was like, hell with it. Like, all got all my family here in the room. We were all chilling, da 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 um, And then my mom came. So when she came, it was more, I mean, this is the only, you know, it's one of the only things she wanted to see is this right. Like, yeah, this is yeah. something that we, like, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you've been exactly. looking forward so to it. So we, she had a conversation with me, and it meant a lot to her to see it. Um and, you know, rest in peace her heart. That was one of her last great memories with me, actually. So, I'm, mm-hmm. man, thank God I did it. You for know sure, what I'm saying? Because yeah, that was, sure. I mean, I, I'm sure she loved it. I know she loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we ended up getting a suit together. And I end up, you know, um, we were drinking a little bit in the room. So, we're having a good time. <laughs> um, 
I ended up getting a suit together that ended up looking like Arizona Wildcat suit. And literally, miss. I'm not in the picture, the green room picture. Was not there for it. Walked in, the, walked in, probably draft is just getting going. Um, what? I walked in, I sat down, probably 10 minutes for the first pick. And then the whole time, I'm just smiling. Like, <laughs> I'm just cheesing. Everybody, like, checking their phone. Yeah. You know, everybody motherfuckers going this, day and the third. Like, my agent, you know, I'm supposed to go forward in the next. I don't give a f- I'm, I'm like, bro, I can go 15. I'm here. I'm, I'm in here. this moment. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm like, let's go. I'm looking at Kel. I'm looking at Justin. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> bro, yeah. I was the happiest guy ever. Like, I let's remember go, watching... I, I kind of heard I was going to the Pistons, and when I tell you, when I heard D, when I said Detroit, whatever, that shit, I didn't, I did not know <laughs> what it meant. And like, I'm just this, yelling yeah. like, "Let's go, Detroit!" <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just yelling. Um, but yeah, it was a bro, probably one of the best nights of my life. Um, it's so crazy. It's so crazy thinking about that. But it's probably, especially now, nine years almost. Yeah, damn. Um, one of the best nights of my life, and it was. Uh, Definitely something for my family that we we'll always remember. So that's dope, that's bro. Dope. That is mm-hmm. dope. When you get to the league, you get did you work? You didn't work out for any team. I worked out for yeah, I actually did. I worked out for Denver. I worked out for Miami. I worked out for New York, and I worked out for Detroit. Was Detroit your best one? No, it was my worst one. It was my worst one, and I came in and I accidentally like said my piece yeah. about how I thought the workout went, right? And I was very pissed because, you know, this is my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So they bring us right off the court and they're asking how the workout went. And I'm like, straight up, I'm like, well, you know, it seems like a little YMCA to me. Like, you know, yeah. we're playing like, you know, playing one-on-one and we're flopping possessions. Yeah. And like, I'm playing two-on-two. And what I felt like, you know, not a fair opportunity for me and my teammate. Like we have to switch teams and make it fair or make yeah. it so someone can dominate yeah. and not just kind of like we all take a turn. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of upset and I didn't think they would draft me because I was I was mad. Yeah. I was visibly mad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything else went well, but like, you know, I was mad and I and I just didn't speak, you know, as myself. I spoke as a as a competitor that I am. Yeah. Um I guess they loved it, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, it was all good. It was all good. Yeah, it was all good. So you got, you get to Detroit. You were staying. Yeah. You were staying in Gundy. Yeah. What was, what is something that opened your eye? Because I've had some stories. Yeah. I've heard of, what is it, like 99 on the clock? Did he still do yep. that? That was Charles Class. Charles Class was is was his like head of player development. Uh-huh. And I love Charles Class, man. That's like my dog. Really? Till this day. That's my dog. Hopefully you get a chance to be with him one day. He thinks he's on Denver. Is he run around the league? Okay. Run into him. Fucking great dude. Great dude. Um yeah, I don't know what he was doing, but we definitely <laughs> <laughs> listen. We got through him. So yeah. it wasn't like it was definitely hard. Yeah. But it wasn't. I guess, I mean. It was hard, bro. I'm talking, talking about Laker drill by yourself type shit. Like run, 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 run. So pretty much what I heard is is I think this came Spencer told us about this. Yeah. 99 on the clock. Oh, mm-hmm. and Spencer got a lot of them. Oh, he said he got Spencer uh, said he got a lot. 99 on the clock, and then they work it out until it gets to zero. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. No, including water breaks as well. So you might get like every 35 minutes, you get one water break for like a minute and get back on the court. This is after practice, after practice. or just on an off day. Oh, yeah. And yeah. No, thank you. Boy. Yeah. No, thank you. Now, Spencer can't be mad because whatever <laughs> happened in Detroit made that motherfucker a monster. Oh, he's a oh, dog yeah. now. Like, he's a dog. whatever happened in Detroit. <laughs> and y'all, I, I saw it because, you know, I watched, I watched the pod every now and again yeah. for sure. And one thing I'll say for Spencer himself, he's called every move he's made in his career. From since I since I was with him in Detroit, uh-huh. I'm talking about from game winners on the teams that he leaves from yep. to exact money he's gonna make to stay in the league. He's called everything. He's called this shot. I'm telling you, I am telling you. He literally said it, and like me, Brandon, and a couple of different guys, I heard this shit one day because 
the day the story, which I'm not sure, I'm not gonna tell the story, but the day he left, it was kind of one of those days. It was like, damn, like what the fuck you doing, Spence, like that? Yeah. So we in the locker room, just like, bro, like keep your head up, like da da da. And he just said his piece, like, and he did his shit. Bro, so kudos. He to has him. a plan. Yeah. For everything, he know he knows. I Never don't know how the fuck he does it, and it pisses me off. I mean, first of all, he's he damn did. good at basketball. No, yeah. he's, he's super good yeah. at basketball. He's really fucking good. That's but a dog. He knows his value. He knows he like. I'm going to do this this year. Yeah. And then the next year, this is what I'm going to get. And yeah. I'm going to go this. I'm like. Bet yeah. on yourself. I mean, yeah, he bets on himself. For believe sure. On, believe, for sure. You got to believe in yourself. But what was your welcome to NBA moment? Because shit, Stan, you're a guy. You, you said it a couple of times on here that there's moments that you have. You're like, damn, I am not ready for that. Yeah. I got to the league. I don't feel like I, I that. My first year, I think the welcome to the NBA moment, I'll say, was Melo. Because he f***ed me up. <laughs> <laughs> like, he f***ed me up, G. And it was no, it was no like, basketball shit, though. Like, yeah. we, you know, we definitely sparred at this shit. Like, I, you know, I had, like, a decent game, like, you know, 10, 11 points, maybe. But, like, he wasn't playing basketball. He was... He was trying to take my will. Yeah. Right. We had like a back to back or 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 New York, New York, space, New York. Mm -hmm. And I was a rookie. And he had about 35. I mean, yep. I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Right. He, he played good. No, he had 35. <laughs> um, but he, I mean, I made him work for all of it, but at the same time, it was the first game that I went home and like your chest hurts, your ribs hurt, yeah. your arms oh, hurt, yeah. your legs hurt. It's like everything. I just laid in the bed like. <laughs> I gotta try a new plan next game. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just take these hits. Yeah. I gotta try something else. <laughs> gotta... Yeah. But that was definitely it. Um, I had Marcus Morris Sr., which I wanna give him a lot of respect as well. He he was a tough motherfucker to be around. Um, he was really fucking good. Mm -hmm. He still is really fucking good. And he made life easy because in practice, it was not, it was hard. Yeah. Um, every day mm -hmm. and his situation was, you know, between his contracts and his life and everything, he really helped me out um, in position for like, sure, you know, competing every day. Mm -hmm. He was not a hater. He, he, he helped me. Yeah. I got drafted. He got traded in. He started ahead of me. Some games it was different, but he, he's a person that s always pushed me in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, stuff he told me to this day that I work on to this day. Um, so made it a little easy to get in like for that. Sure. For sure. What was what was some of the like? How'd you handle some of the up and down that comes with the league? As far well, not even the league in Detroit, because you first get there, you're a lottery pick. Yeah, you're like, yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I didn't really handle the stuff in Detroit until I got to Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot going on, a lot of switch, a lot of moving around. Mm -hmm. um, a, a tough space to a tough space to to be. Sam Van Gundy was my guy, and mm -hmm. he drafted me. He he's he's always wanted the best for me. Um, I think you know with all the transition with leadership and everything like that, it was just a tough space for for guys to be their best in mm -hmm. in general. Um, so once I got to Toronto, where they had real leadership, real direction, and it was more of like a college situation, mm -hmm. um, I started figuring out the league a little more for sure. um, day by day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and it kind of sped it up. Cause I, I came right, right after they won a the championship, so everybody's feeling good. Oh, so yeah. that you know them good juices I kind of took, and I I think without the lessons I learned in Detroit, mm -hmm. right? But just to put the language and communication behind it, for sure, it was definitely Toronto, for sure. Yeah, I know in Detroit y'all ran into that man in the right playoffs. Around. Yeah, yeah. But like y'all had a squad. I'm gonna put out y'all like y'all had a pretty good team. Yeah, we 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 should have been better. Um, tough one though, right? Yeah, tough that's a, that's, that's tough a, one. Hey, listen, Brian ran the East. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was was a sweep. Did y'all get yeah, one? Yeah, we got swept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got swept. We got swept. And obviously, looking back at it, showed you the NBA game, and you know this now. Like, I, I say some shit right now. I'm like, oh, you're fucking crazy. You guys were, wasn't even close. But these games are in margins, mm -hmm. right? And what gets a, gets a sweep done is winning by one, mm -hmm. not yeah. winning by twenty every game. Yeah. yeah. So we were definitely competitive, which is not saying much, but um, 
it was really fun. Yeah. And the shit that I, you know, you hear you hear what Bron saying and Rondo, I just said, I think I heard him on a pod. Oh, about talking, the coaches? Yeah, talking about coaching in the game and shit like that. That was the difference in mm -hmm. our series. Um, he knew everything. He knew everything. And, and, he, and I, we caught him by surprise because we, you know, they, they let me guard him one on one mm -hmm. with not that much help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't think he was expecting. Mm -hmm. And it was a really physical series. I don't think he was expecting that either. Mm -hmm. But he didn't allow bullshit. Like yeah. he didn't he didn't do the same thing twice. Like he didn't after the first game, there was no like he went quicker. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't allow you weren't waiting on he shit, didn't man. continue the same mistakes over and over. Yeah. And to a to a higher level, right? When we had him on the ropes and we did well. In those moments, he was able to get really good, clean looks. And then what people don't like, Kyrie Irving. Yeah, he changed the whole shit. It's he's different. Yes. Like, you feel me? <laughs> like, it's different. Like yeah. you can, it's different. So mm -hmm. as good as LeBron was, that series, in my opinion, was won by Kyrie. Mm -hmm. Um play the clip. Yeah. My man, a, yeah deep play, corner. It, exactly. You that's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> That shit was that shit was behind the backboard, bro. Play the I, that shit was he, behind the backboard. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm like, bro, bro, what? bro, bro. It I'm talking different. about. I'm talking about. We had the game fucking won. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're sitting back. That I mean, only a pass LeBron could make, but we're not mad. LeBron made it. He catches it. He's tiptoeing and shoots it over the backboard. Cash, the whole fucking palace silent. Just watch yeah. Stan Van Gundy. Stands like silent, silent, and we gotta go to game four. We're like, F bro, like, <laughs> <laughs> day tired. We gave everything in this joint, like. But that's the thing. You win game three. We we got action. We, we got, got action. action. Yeah, we gonna we gonna give our ass on game four, yeah. and then game five, we back in Cleveland. We, I mean, let's see what's up, right? You know, whatever happens, <laughs> yeah. right? But we here. But fuck, we here. We, we didn't here, you know, yeah. go with one. <laughs> but a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I would say that that shot was crazy. Yeah, I was, I was, but they did some o, some o shit before that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the whole shit was crazy. Cause like, I would say this: Stan Van Gundy, their first and second plan. Stan Van Gundy wiped that shit out. He, I don't believe Stan Van Gundy got out coaching that series. LeBron, yeah, <laughs> yeah. coach. LeBron happened. Like yeah, yeah, team yeah, on the court. Yeah, yeah, like sure, yeah, man. they run like you know that America's play with the split screen. Mm -hmm. Pass him to the elbow. Split screen this way, Kevin Love on this side. Yeah, it's they ran it so many different ways, and they and they started the actions like we were trying to hide Reggie, not because of of defensively he was actually a, one of our better. Like we were gonna switch yeah. him on to Bron, okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because of his length, but he also was going. He had a hundred pick and rolls a game. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying. We got, <laughs> yeah. how, you know we were wear the man out. That's a fact. So he he went to the third quarter, and he would switch Reggie into that spot. And no matter who it was, it was it was RJ in the corner. He he put RJ in the mix. He was Channing Fry. He put Channing Fry over there. He it, it wouldn't matter. And that was, to me, that was just like micro genius. Mm -hmm. He's that, dissecting everything. Yeah, you can't really we can't really prepare for it. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> can't really prepare for it. So with yeah. that, like knowing that now, like in a league, how important is it to be very detail oriented? You can't get by without it. Especially here's what people don't understand, right? There's only two or three players that they're playing probably in rhythm all game long. Like some teams won, some teams just two. Mm -hmm. So like everybody else has to know what the f is going on. Every yeah. single thing, and you cannot f up. Yes, yeah. and sometimes like, like me and Theo are on the same team, right? We're in the second unit together. And by the time our first, second game together, I'm like, all right, Theo, like I'm, I'm, I'll get that bitch off the rim. I'm, I'm coming down hard, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if not, if I, you see me ease up, just go ahead and get my, I'm gonna pitch. I'm gonna run to the corner. Yeah. Like we gotta know, have energy. We gotta know what the hell is going on, mm -hmm. or we are gonna run into each other. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you, you, I don't that micro detail. I, I think that's that's the difference between maybe like a first contract and a second contract. Mm. In my opinion, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Even just. More years in the league, yeah. yeah. Because they're like, oh yeah, everybody here can play. Can you lock in on the game plan? Yeah, and you know all the tendencies yeah. that mm -hmm. we were teaching you. Like, are you doing the extra work yep. to understand what this team is going to bring at you? Yeah. Like, my thing is, you play the Raptors. I don't know what they're going to look like now that Nick Nurse is in there, but you knew when you play the Raptors, they're going to be heavy help. Yeah, you're not getting to that paint. 
you're going to have to shoot some yeah. threes and you're going to have to make them. Yeah. You and you play Boston, they going to hack you. Mm-hmm. JT, you're fucking hack. <laughs> 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 JB, you're hack. Like, it, it's certain teams, you just know how they're going to play. Mm-hmm. You play Braun. Braun is dissecting everything. Yeah. You yeah. can try to put Braun in whatever the hell you want. He's like, not going to, yeah. Go. Yeah, he's not going to he, He's yeah. passing everybody off. Yeah. It's like a merry-go-round. All right, nope, nope, you go up there. Nope, yeah. you go up there. Like, it, it's not happening. But I think it, I think that's a huge uh, thing right there, Stan, because it is very detail-oriented. It yeah. really is. So you get traded to the Raptors? I got, I signed I signed there in the summer. Oh, you're a free agent? Yeah. And then you signed with the Raptors? I signed, with the, signed with the Raptors. Um, what made you pick the Raptors? Development. Really? Um, I saw a guy, I saw Norman and OG really. Yeah. That that they, they developed them. And I feel like I had a I think a better deal somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Not think I know I had a better deal somewhere else. Um, but I think for me, Masai, having a conversation with Masai, um, Nico, um, Bobby, and then just understanding what they bring to the table was was an easy sell. And I just had been out there. Um, you know, doing OVO Fest and different things. And I was talking to my friend Nico, I'm like, it'd be crazy to play here. Like, it'd be crazy. I was just thinking about it. Yeah. And, um, and then the Texas hit you. I mean, the Texas, <laughs> that shit came back. <laughs> that shit came back. But yeah. <laughs> um, he had the opportunity. I couldn't pass on it. For sure. And that was honestly probably, I mean, anybody who hasn't been to Toronto, hasn't stayed in Toronto, that place is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, that is one of the most amazing places in the world. Up and down, um, I re- thoroughly enjoyed myself there. Um, from basketball culture to just culture in general, mm-hmm. um, it's, it was two of the most amazing years of my life. Two, three and a half, whatever. Mm-hmm. COVID and shit, but yeah. um, even through COVID, it was awesome. So, yeah. um, definitely great. Glad I made that decision. Definitely sure. glad I made that decision for sure. Uh, I forgot to ask you when you was back in Detroit, though, because you were how many years in Detroit? Three, uh, three and a half. Three, three I got and a half to in Detroit. Detroit. So, what was the game that? You felt comfortable, like okay, I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fine here. Do you remember like a moment or anything? Oh yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, by by then I was I was pretty solid. But my first preseason game off the rip, it was it just worked. Really? Yeah, everything just worked. I was like, oh okay, this you know this is how. Yeah. It's so much space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's actually space. weird, right? It's like moving faster, but for an athlete. You're, it's a little, a little easier. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we kept going, um, I kind of got more, more consistent. I would think, I think that, you know, that's the one thing about sometimes your destination where you're at. So there's things that I definitely should have picked up on. Um, and just the ways they te- teach things. Like, I'm saying this over experience now, not just me speaking on it. The way like Toronto Raptors teach how to play your position in their offense in their system, yeah. it's a lot different than how I was taught in Detroit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's like says nothing to know. Like I, what I'm saying is, it's just a little easier to learn. Yeah, right. So, um, in my first year, I felt like I was doing things right, but I was just off my talent. Yeah. I wasn't really like grasping concepts that mm-hmm. would keep yeah. me going further. Like I learned how to play off closeouts in Toronto. In Detroit, I didn't really know how to play off closeouts. Mm-hmm. Like, like you know, people will say, "Oh, you can't shoot," or "Oh, you're not a good shooter." But just because you can't shoot or not good doesn't mean one you have to shoot all the threes. Yeah, right? and two doesn't mean you should pass it every time. Exactly. Right? You're right. So yeah. it's like, Facts. like those simple things that people are like, "Oh, well, how, how does that make sense?" Well, go watch some film and go watch some tape, <laughs> exactly. and you'll see. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, no offense to Ben, but Ben Ben was an all star, never yeah. getting closed out on. So you, you, you got to tell me there's other ways to play than sure, just yeah. playing what the defense gives to you all the time, right? Yeah. Sometimes you can force action. So um, I know that was another, probably another question, but that was my answer. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that's one of the things that you just got to really pay attention to. But I want to get into just like you, you, get, you go to from Toronto and then mm-hmm. you come back home. Yeah. How was that? It was good. Um, I was ready. Really? I was ready. And obviously, like, it was like, I was a free agent, so I went to the South Bay Lakers first. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- when I tell you I had no plan on going to the Lakers at the point in time, right? 
Um, my actually my first ten days with the Chicago Bulls, I got mm-hmm. COVID before I could even get out the hotel room in Miami. Damn. Um, so I sat there for ten days and supposed to be on the Bulls, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, let the story go. I don't get COVID. I don't think I'm not on the Bulls mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of the season. But it didn't happen that way. Um, and God, you know, God works in mysterious ways. It does. Um, it's just a lot of preparation and patience and. When I tell you, like, I probably shouldn't say this out loud, but, you know, I was in Miami staying at the Ritz for 10 days and I was, you know, running up the stairs, you know, 30, 30, 30 flights of stairs daily. Mm. Just knowing that, like, you know, there's going to be an opportunity. And when that comes, I want to be ready. I need to be ready. Yeah. Like now, you know, I need to be ready. Yeah. So, you know, I'm sitting there doing what I got to do, you know, get a chance to come home. You know, my, it's one of my I think my daughter's first Christmas at the time. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my girl at the crib, and you know we're trying to get ready. And like my agent calls me, he's like, "You want to play? You, you want to play on Christmas Day?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you know, fuck it, what? yeah. He's like, "No, you want to play?" I'm like, yeah. He's like, "All right, you, you can play tomorrow at Staples." I'm like, "No fucking way." That's crazy. Like, and that's like a childhood dream to me. So that was yeah. my first game, and mind you, not I play like the whole game. So it's like literally, people. Some people like you know, talk a lot of shit, right? And and I literally, I remember praying to God because, you know, you're out the league and, and, and you, so, you know, you go through mental stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And especially to, to, and I'm so, I have, I have inconclusives. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I took every COVID shot, did all this shit, and I, now I can't play. I'm, I'm not sure if another 10 days is going to come around. Exactly. Chicago Bulls, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they decimated my injury. It's going to be a great opportunity. I'm praying to God, 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 please help me. Da, 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 da. And... The fact that it came like that, like I never would have expected that. And mm-hmm. that's like a testament to God, like yeah. how God works. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like how much do you believe in what he's saying to you? And are yeah. you working yeah. like in his purpose, doing what you have to do? Yeah. Um, and I trusted and I believed and I'm, you know, I'm not, I've always been, you know, in my faith, but I think over the pandemic, um, practicing my faith and like really praying daily and watching church and doing those things that you know, show your light. Um, that was like, you know, I was probably into my strongest points and mm-hmm. for it to happen like that, like it was obviously a great basketball thing, but I mean, just the reassurance like that was like, you know, like my, my, that's my testimony, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. crazy. Um, that's dope. And then going forward, it was, you know, it was, it was a great season for the, for the time being. For sure. That's dope as hell. Yeah. I mean, that, the fact that you, you say you were South Bay, I was with Maine. I got yeah. a call up same time. Mm-hmm. Played on Christmas Day. Did not think I was gonna be playing on Christmas Day that year. Yeah, like getting legit minutes in at the end of the game. I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" And people don't understand. Like, like we, I was telling somebody the other day. I was like, "I know everybody's supposed to watch the games, mm-hmm. but all of these GMs don't watch the games." Yeah. <laughs> They got NBA pass. They're supposed to watch every joint, right? Yeah. yeah. They ain't watching every joint. Exactly. <laughs> but Christmas Day, if you're on the court, they watch they that watch joint. That game. You they feel me? So that's like that a game. great opportunity. No, it was crazy. Um, outside of the team aspect, right? But like, you know, in 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 real time for players, like, you know, we're kind of in competition with the other team and also in competition with each other. Mm-hmm. That's that's such a blessing. Mm-hmm. Like it's such a blessing to have that type of platform. Yeah. Better yet than obviously Christmas Day games in general. Yeah. For so. sure. That's dope, bro. Um you go from Laker. You played the last. You were with San Antonio last year. Last year, yeah. Talk about Greg Popovich, man. Talk about being coached by. I mean, is he the goat? The goat coach. I mean, it's, it's, it's an argument. It's a, yeah, he's definitely argument. up there. I would. I would say it. It was definitely because um, that's. It, it had to be completely different from everything you. No, nah, really, it wasn't that much different. I, it was pure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pure. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love being coached by him. Yeah. Um, it was tough, but I love this game so much. And even when I was wrong, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed having that pure of basketball. Honesty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. From everything. Mm-hmm. How on time were you? What do you do in the game? How do you think the game? Doing the right things, like not keeping, not making it all X and O's, X and O's all the time. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just me and you. Yeah. Sometimes it's just That's here. Dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's just y'all figure it out, mm-hmm. you know. And I just love his passion for it. 
I love the the attention he puts in it. I love how he when he comes in the room, everybody's everybody's attention elevates. Yeah. Mm. Everybody's care point elevates. Mm. Um you 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 know who doesn't want to play in the finals? Like who doesn't want to be coached by the best? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it it definitely has helped my career. Yeah. Um, especially, you know, you know, going, you know, now going forward, you're just confident in certain things, confident in certain mm-hmm. things that, you know, traditionally, because no matter what you say, people will say, I'll, I'll be to say, there is bad coaches. Yeah. Yeah. So let's not be surprised. Right. Yeah. Right. So some of this shit, you get bad information and you, you just feel, you know, you start playing different, you feel different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so just hear from him and having that, that staff around me for that time, um, I was, it was a blessing and I really enjoyed it. For sure. Before we, uh, before we end, I want you to just talk about just, Stanley, you were a lottery pick. Talk about now, we still trying to figure it out, mm. figure it all out, like where your mental is and how you got through, like you're getting through, like just trying to figure it out every day, like staying locked in on the main thing, being the main thing. And I know for me, my, Little girl helps me out a lot mm-hmm. and my, and my uh, fiance. So, like, just talk about it from your perspective. I mean, what you said is a big part of it, is mm-hmm. keeping the main goal the main goal. Yeah. Um, I would say that I can't, the, the only thing that's gotten me through is Christ. Yeah. Honestly. Um, my faith in God mm-hmm. and having those conversations with him daily mm-hmm. is really the only thing that has gotten me through this um, years or what I'm going to go through as well. Um. I just have an upstanding faith in myself and I have an upstanding faith that I'm going to do what I have to do when the time comes. That faith and that, that upstanding stuff is comes from my work ethic and what I do on a daily basis. I, I tell anybody I, I would give advice to, if I can wake up, if I can be accountable to wake up on time every day and start my day like that, I can do anything. Mm-hmm. Nothing but time and space, right? So for me, it's just about doing the right thing I'm definitely results driven, but I'm also pro- like the way that I pr- the way I do these things mm-hmm. also means a lot to me as well. Mm-hmm. So, as I said before, I'm glad I love basketball, or I wouldn't be probably doing this anymore. Yeah, right. Because it's 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 it, it has become more than that. It's it's become you know physical, mental, spiritual has be done that. But this is my life, and I and I really enjoy what I do. Um, and I feel I feel I feel like I found out so much about myself. Yeah. And about about people around me as well. Um, so I'm really enjoying this process and I'm healthy and it's 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 hard to put words to it, as you would know. Like, mm. you know, you don't you're a lot of indecision and especially in 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 this work field, and and it, it's like, oh, maybe some days you're gonna be over here someday, and you're all gonna be high and you are gonna be low. Um, but I feel like, you know, from 18 to now. Um, without a tool or a vehicle like basketball to jog some of these life experiences, yeah, right? It's it's helped me out more than just this basketball. Yeah, this basketball yeah. shit is actually the easiest part. Yeah, right. It's actually how you know what happens before I get there, mm-hmm. and I think cleaning those things up um, is what helps me go forward. And mm-hmm. I mean, just like everybody else, by the way, like this is situations and business yeah. more than it is who was actually like a better player or worse. So it's mm-hmm. like that's all it is. Shit goes and comes and shit moves and moves and shakes. Yeah. It's just like, you know, what are you going to do on Christmas Day? Are mm-hmm. you going to be ready to play? Yeah. yeah. And how is that, you know, because you can have one day and that could change your life. Yeah. Or you have one not to have that day is that going to change your life as well. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So. Were you ready? Yep. Were you ready? You know what I'm saying? If, if the call doesn't happen, like, are you okay with that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I'm glad I'm 27 and I'm, you know, this is a, a young man's sport. So I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're both still young. Yeah, in this for thing. sure. <laughs> Um, and experience. So I think the best is yet to come and have my other opinions on the on the game these days. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's how I, how I keep myself going. Yeah. Time. For sure. <laughs> for sure. But before we go, we got two questions. First yes, question sir. is, what is the NBA's America's team? The the Lakers is. He played with the Lakers, so I don't just come on, bro. What 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 would what would it be? I agree. I, right. I agree. I say the Lakers. Some people have said the Celtics? Knicks. Celtics? Somebody said the Knicks. No one thinks the Knicks is a, is no one should think that. Explain. What are the what what, what the f do they do? I mean <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, like, especially like I mean, when 
in my generation, my gener- you know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, want? let's be honest. Yeah. Like, wh- why would we, like, the Mecca, there's more NBA players out of California. So, they're, I mean, the Mecca of basketball, I, I, and by the way, I love New York. Yeah. I love New York. But, like, New York is, New York with that basketball, like, you know, the Mecca of basketball, which is true, but it's more of, like, a label than, you know, what actually is in the dirt there. Mm-hmm. And they're going, you know, I'm probably going to get fried for this one. But end of the day, like, I don't think people think about the Knicks when they think about Before basketball. the Lakers. I think they think about the Celtics. Yeah, yeah. Celtics. Maybe no, them, I, uh, right? somebody made Warriors a good point. Like, when people there we t- go. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, new generation guys yeah, think sure. about the Warriors first. For right? sure. Yeah. I think people from other countries and stuff, like if you ask them, like, what do you think about the NBA? Oh, yeah, the Lakers. Like, they're going to yes, say yeah. that. You know so, what I'm saying? So you're saying that same thing because it's New York. Yeah. No, I mean, I I, 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 agree. Like, I, I feel like in China, it's like Houston, the Rockets. Whoa, outside now with the Darren Morey stuff, but. You know, oh yeah, yeah. I think I it's the Lakers. It's... Though. Yeah, for exactly. sure. Right, and exactly. that's you can think like that's what I think about maybe the Bulls. That's um, true. About true. how the league was built and what yeah. made it popular. You yeah. know, Magic and Bird, then Jordan yeah. and X, Y, and Z. And now everybody know about the Warriors. Yeah, everybody know about. Them. It's gonna be a whole new phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. For sure. it, when it they, really when they is, retire. Bro. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. It's it's gonna be nuts. Oh my god. Last question, AJ. Uh, what's the what's the tally? Go ahead. Who got a deeper bag, Luca or Shea? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all did this coach. That's so unfair, bro. <laughs> you know, both these motherfuckers, the type of motherfuckers to see this shit one run across their screen one day. They gonna be at my hey, listen. <laughs> I'm not looking to no hey, more. Hey. <laughs> and and fucking be like, oh yeah, I heard I remember yeah. that shit. <laughs> right? And I'm out of the motherfucking garden. Yep. <laughs> um fuck, man. That's so tough, man. Because Luca does it in different ways, mm-hmm. and I think the Shea has a really good footwork as well, and has more array of maybe dribbling s- skills. But Luca's change of pace and what he does at six eight and what two sixty two fifty, big boy, right? It's you know what I'm saying? Like it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um. But I say bigger bag. Bigger bag. Deeper, Deeper bag. bag. Yeah. Bigger bag gonna be Luca. He about to get like 80 million <laughs> <laughs> a year. <laughs> Wait, not if you go, go there. I'm gonna go with Luca. I'm gonna go with Luca just off shot making ability. And mm-hmm. this is gonna eight, this is not like, you know, he's not like a 45% three point shooter or anything like that. But if you just see the shit that he's doing in crunch time mm-hmm. and I guess they both have kind of the same responsibility in a way. They both yeah. high usage guys. For sure. But he has a lot of shit. Yeah. It's hard. It's 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 my, it's hard to see because mm-hmm. he has his back to you. You're always on the side of him at times. Yeah. But even the fact that you're always on the side of him mm-hmm. is hard to do. Like, and you I mean I I don't want to talk about it. But. Hey, this this motherfucker <laughs> was on the team when Pop was like, uh, we're not gonna let Luca get 60. Or like 50 or something. Luca had 50. I didn't play though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Luca yeah, had 50, bro. He went crazy. When I tell you the craziest fucking scheme, too. Really? Like, it had, you know it's crazy. Cause you know, you know, Nick does that wild shit. Yeah. So we I've you know, I've tried some wild shit in games. Yes. <laughs> right. And I'm sitting back like, if he cracks these things, it's not gonna work. It's just gonna have like two guys high on the court. Yeah. You know, he comes out. You know, rolling his fucking neck, all this shit. First play of the game, slow step all uh, the way to the basket. Yeah. Touch the backboard too. I said, we are in trouble <laughs> tonight. <laughs> that was not the fucking game plan. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Man, that shit is Step back three and shit, man. Bro, hey, nah, the, my, the, both them motherfuckers gifted. Thank but we man. nine nine. Very it's gifted. nine nine. But hey, both of them got deep bags. Yeah. Both of them very talented. But Stan, bro, that was an unbelievable podcast. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate you coming on. For sure. Um, shit. First, I just want to be like, we appreciate Prize Picks, our new uh, presenting partner, uh, for showing us love. It's been dope. Um, hopefully, we keep this thing going. And y'all already know what to do. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And Stan, we appreciate you coming on, brother. Hey, man. Dope. 
I really yeah, appreciate y'all. Mother, mother. Big fan of y'all. Sure. Root for y'all. Always for sure. the pot as well. And root for you also on the court as well. Root for you as well. So always blessings, family. For sure, love, brother. Love. For sure. And y'all already know. We out. Peace.